Man, I'm so glad God doesn't let us down. Uh, Sometimes we don't get exactly what we want, uh, but he's a God that's faithful. Can you say faithful? Uh, Say it again like we mean it. He's faithful. He's faithful. So as we pray today and we move into our our message, let's remember that God is faithful, that God speaks, that he's near us even when he feels so far away. And so with that in mind, why don't you bow your heads? Father, we thank you that you're faithful. God, we thank you that not, not only are you good, God, but let's say you're great. Father, you're holy. Father, we trust you. So I just ask today that you would ah, give us eyes to see and ears to hear, God, all the things you want to speak to us. Father, we love you and praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, before you're seated, give a high five or a hug to someone next to you, and then you may have a seat. Mm -mm. Well, uh, good morning, and want to welcome those in our family venue and here today. How many of you guys are excited to be here today? Even though I have an opportunity to speak, there's times when I walk into service and you get hit with a message and then you're just like, man, I got to like actually do something with it now. Ever been in that place, right? Got to do something with it. And um, so we start today and I just want to say, man, has this series not been good? I think it's been such a, an amazing series. We've had two speakers already, Pastor Doug first week, Pastor Derek last week. If you had not met or have not seen Pastor Derek before, can we say he did a phenomenal job, amen, right? Uh, did such a great job. And so I like to talk about uh, things that are just practically happening. So the end of Thursday, I finish up my message and I'm heading back into the office. And before I get to the office, I go to the only amazing restaurant on the planet, which is Chick-fil-A. Come on, you knew it. You knew it. Listen, come on, can I get it? For those who like Chick-fil-A, let's go, all right? For you guys who are too good for Chick-fil-A, we need to go on a little like Chick-fil-A conversation and we'll, I'll show you all the good stuff. But I left Chick-fil-A and I headed to the office and I'm feeling excited. If you've ever spoken before and you start to feel good, you're like, okay, I can rest now. My weekend's going to be good. And so I get into the office and if you've never met Jenna before, Jenna's one of our staff people. And so I get to her office and I've got a Chick-fil-A receipt with me. And so I fold it and I give it to her. She looks at it and says, this is trash and throws it in the garbage. Now I was hurt on the inside (laughs) and... I'm thinking in my mind, you don't throw away a blessing. Anyone in here throw away a blessing? Someone give you something, you don't throw it away. And so, but she looked at me and she said, why are you giving me your trash? And I said, this is not trash. And so we go go a little bit further and I find out that she eats at Chick-fil-A, but that she doesn't understand the greatest thing about Chick-fil-A. And that's that at the bottom of the receipt, multiple times throughout your time at Chick-fil-A, they will actually give you free chicken. How many of you guys knew that? Not many. So I did what any good leader would do. I took a quantitative study of all of our staff people because I figured if you're a Christian, you know about this because this is Chick-fil-A. They're a Christian restaurant. So I go through all of our office and I ask all of our staff people because I'm trying to, like, if you know there's something that people are lacking, you want to help them find it. Amen? So I go there and I check with every staff person and literally literally 98%, everyone say 98%. 98% of people did not know that at the bottom of some Chick-fil-A receipts, there is free chicken. All you got to do is fill out a survey. And so I thought, man, I will call Pastor Doug because he's spiritual. I called him and we talked and I said, Pastor Doug, you would never just throw away a blessing, would you? And he said, of course not, but give me the context. He's smart. He's like, give me the context though. Um, And so I tell him this and uh, he hadn't done it either. And so... (laughs) And so as we're talking, I'm like, I'm going to check with our our people. So how many of you guys knew that there was a Chick-fil-A that they gave away free chicken? How many of you guys knew? Look around the room. There's like two people, okay? So like our staff, so you know know what you're saying? You've been throwing away blessings. We have given Chick-fil-A back thousands of thousands of dollars. And so help me when you go to Chick-fil-A, no, read your receipt because it's on there. And so I was talking to Pastor Doug and I said, you know what I'm going to do? Because I, I was, uh, I'm a self-proclaimed marketing director for Chick-fil-A. Wherever I go, um, I, 
I, I proclaim who they are, and so they don't know yet. So we're, we're still working on them actually paying me royalties for all the people that I filled with chicken. So this week, this week and next week, I'm going to call Chick-fil-A, and I'm going to say, look, guys, we are Christians. Amen? Uh, we love Jesus, and we have been throwing away our receipts. And so the only good thing for you guys to do is to give me a free chicken sandwich for all of our church, and I can hand it out. Um, so I'm going to be working on that. Uh, give me some grace. It may take a while. Um, but... I can't take all the credit because Pastor Doug brought it up too. So we were kind of talking and we're in there. Um, And so with that in mind, because you're probably wondering, we're we're supposed to be talking about Abraham. You're talking about Chick-fil-A. But the title of today's message, you'll see it in your notes, is Don't Miss Out. Don't miss out. I feel like there's times in our lives when we miss out on things. Anyone ever been there where you find out something late and the person tells you, you're like, why didn't you tell me earlier, Right. But there's times in our lives when we miss out on things. And as I was praying and reading through today's message in Scripture, have you ever been like me where you read a passage of Scripture and you're like, what is this thing saying? Right? Um, it, be honest. No, no judgment, I promise. Uh-huh. But there's times, and even as a pastor, that happens to us. And so I believe today that there's times when we're missing out on what God says. And it's not in a, in a bad reason, but it's because sometimes we can only see on the surface what it's saying. When, when you dig down deep into Scripture, you find so many great elements that not only challenge, but transform our lives. And so as I was researching, I, f- I came upon a great passage of Scripture. You'll see it in your notes if you want to turn to it. It's 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 14. And this is what the passage says. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For the spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except the person, um, the person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except the God, God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak God's given, uh, we speak the words God has given to us by his spirit, using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Let me bow your heads. I want to pray over that passage for a second. God, I pray that uh, you'd open our eyes and our ears that we may see and hear all the things you want to show us today. So you're first fill in the blank, and I want you to not miss out on two things today. And the first one is this, and you can fill us in. When the meaning of God's word seems hidden, his Holy Spirit can uncover its truths. Whenever you're searching or reading through God's word and it feels like it's hard to understand or to comprehend, I want to encourage you that God's Holy Spirit can take what seems hidden and bring it to life with truth. So if I, w- I want to be honest with you, as I was given this amazing passage by Pastor Dan, who, got, who kind of oversaw our series, uh, chapters 13 and 14, it's actually somewhat of a difficult passage to pre- on, preach on. And so I don't know if this ever happens to you, but I'm in my office and I'm reading through it. And I said, you know, if I lay on the floor, maybe I'll get, you know, more insight. And so I lay on the floor and then I fall asleep. Anyone ever fell asleep when you're reading the word, right? So I fell asleep. Pastors fall asleep too. And um, it's more spiritual. If you sleep, then God can speak better, you know. So I slept. (laughs) And I, I hit a wall. And so I'm reading through this passage, which is Genesis 13 and 14, and I hit a wall and I'm just like, God, what are you trying to say? What do you want to say to God's people? If you ever sit around a pastor who's researching, man, you you can research until you're blue in the face, but in the end, you want to know, God, what do you want to say? I want you guys to leave here and feel like, man, there's a word that God spoke that is transforming me from the inside out. And so I did what only good pastor does. You call a friend. Right? So I called a friend and we talked for a moment. And literally, I got just this revelation of what God was saying. And it was through God's Holy Spirit who spoke through a friend of mine. And I want to, for a moment, demystify the Holy Spirit. I believe that we all have preconceived notions of who or what the Holy Spirit is. But I'd ask you this morning, what if we just put that aside and let me give you, give you the foundational understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. Is that okay? So we're going to 
put all our thoughts aside, and I'm going to start with this. As you read throughout Scripture and you search Scripture, you realize that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. So simply, the Holy Spirit is a person, not an it or a thing or something that we use to make ourselves look better, but the Holy Spirit is there as a helper. And so Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, and then as you go throughout Scripture, he said, I'm going to leave because there's someone better that's going to come. And what he meant was the Holy Spirit. And so the third thing about the Holy Spirit is he is our advocate. Can everyone say advocate? Advocate. Now, in the midst of a world where there's so many interesting things about the Holy Spirit, I'd encourage you with this, that at the core of it, he's here to help us. And so as we are moving through this, these passages of Scripture that we're getting ready to read, I want you to know that there's many ways that the Holy Spirit can speak. And one of the great ways that he speaks is through other relationships. Has anyone in here ever needed wisdom on something and you talked to a, a spiritual friend and they helped you with insight? Right? And so God works that way. And so if you study scripture and you study the history of the church, back in Jesus' day, they actually didn't even have one of these. Did you realize that? They, didn't, they actually didn't have the Bible, so they had scrolls. And whenever you wanted to hear God's word, you actually went either to the temple or you were in a community group that had a scripture and then it was read there. And so what you have to understand about the Bible and about even the early church is a part of learning scripture is about doing it with other people. So a shameless plug, if that's okay. Life groups are coming up. Everyone say life groups. Life groups. And we believe that that is one of the foundational ways that God can speak to you when you're going through something, when you're in need of support. And so I want to encourage you, as we move into this life group season, if you've never been a part of life groups, realize that you're missing out on this um, early church ability to be around other people who may know more or may have gone through the same situation you've gone through, and they can give you wisdom. Is that okay? Good stuff. So get in life groups. Amen. So we're going to venture through chapters 13 and 14 very quickly, so in about an hour. So we're going to be here for an hour today. And as, I'm joking, and as we, <laughs> so many people are like, are you kidding me? Church is supposed to be an hour and five minutes, maybe 10 with good worship. No, um, so as we venture through um, Abraham's story, we're coming on the cusp of where uh, Pastor Derek left off last week, where in the season of waiting, um, Abraham makes a decision to not trust God and to trust himself. And what I'm so glad about with God is that when we're imperfect, God still chooses to use us. Anyone happy about that? Right? When we're unworthy, um, God still plans to give us favor and blessing. And so where we pick up the story is in chapter 13, you've got Lot and you've got Abraham, and God has said that they are so wealthy. Everyone say wealthy. Wealthy. They're so wealthy that the ground cannot hold all of their cows and all of their livestock and all of their people. So they get to this place to where there are actually more than the ground that's around them, and then you find out that now the herdsmen of Lot and Abraham are bickering and fighting. Hashtag family probs. Right? So we find them here at, with having family problems. And so we're going to pick up the story there. So why don't you guys go ahead and turn to chapter 13. And we're going to start here at Genesis uh, 8, chap, uh, 13, verse 8. And it says, Finally Abraham said to Lot, let's, now allow this, let's not allow this conflict to come between us um, or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. Now, as we look at the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit giving us insight about this passage of Scripture, I want to encourage you to actually look past what's just in front of you, which is, okay, they were fighting, and, I mean, or the herdsmen were fighting, and then they decided to part ways. Um, but what you see behind the scenes is you see that Abraham had all the ability to rebuke Lot for his herdsmen. And this is why I say that. As you look at this passage of scripture, Lot did not go back to his herdsmen and say, hey, you shouldn't be fighting with Abraham because it's because of him that we are wealthy and we are here. So like if you're a parent, listen here, I brought you in this world and I didn't take you out, 
right? That's literally what Abraham could have said because Lot is his nephew. And the only reason why Lot is wealthy is because Abraham said, hey, you young snotty kid, come with me. And so he begins to gather this wealth and he's tagging on to the favor of Abraham. But you don't see Lot um, contradicting um, or you don't see Lot uh, complaining, um, not that he's got all this great stuff, but they're complaining because there's too many people in the land. So the passage goes on. The whole uh, countryside is open to you. This is Abraham speaking. Take your choice of any section of the land you want, and we will separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land on the right. And if you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the land on the left. Now, what's not in this passage of Scripture is us. So imagine if you had a nephew who was ungrateful, right? Or a child, or a family member, or a friend. Abraham had the full ability to get frustrated and angry with Lot, but instead we find Abraham looking at this differently. Now, anyone in here have kids or are a kid? Because if you're a kid, this is going to apply to you too. So has anyone been to Disneyland before? Yeah, okay, a few times, maybe Six Flags, maybe somewhere nice. What I have learned about my kids is they could be in the middle of an amazing, fun vacation, and instead of enjoying and being thankful and gracious, in the midst of it, they're talking about what they want to do later. Anyone ever been there? You're on a ride. Everyone's screaming and laughing and having fun. Oh, by the way, are we going to go do this tomorrow? It's like, could you just be glad that I brought you here? Okay, I didn't have to. Thank you. Thank me for that, right? And so this is where we find Lot, where instead of Lot honoring Abraham, he's actually sitting back and he's allowing his herdsmen, hence he's a part of it, complaining about the fact that the land is so um, cluttered with their people and not honoring Abraham. But what we see about Abraham is Abraham chooses to bless Lot over getting frustrated with him. I would have got frustrated with him. I'll be honest. Anyone would have got frustrated with him? I would have. But Abraham's more spiritual than us sometimes, right? Um, and so he doesn't. He doesn't repay his ble- the blessings with a curse. He tells him, I want you to look at everything in the land. Everything. And whatever you want, you take it and I'll take the leftovers. Whatever you don't want, I will take it. But here's the side point that's not in the passage of Scripture that the Holy Spirit can reveal to us. And it's this, that you're not in lack because someone else is blessed. Right? You're not in lack because someone else is blessed. And what we see in our lives is we see someone and they've got something great. And so we stand off to the side and we say, man, I I want that. And if I don't get that or if they get it over me, then there's no way that I can be blessed. But I want you to understand that the blessing that God has for you is different than the blessing that he has for you. Right? And what our spirits will tell us sometimes or our flesh actually will say, man, if I don't get what you have, then I'm not blessed. And so what you see in the life of Abraham is he understood that he could bless and he could give to others, realizing that God is faithful. Can we say faithful? To take care of me. And what happens a lot of times is we reverse that and we say, man, if I don't go for what's mine, I'm not going to get what I deserve. But Abraham shows us a different light. And there's a passage in Proverbs 11:5 5, which I love, and it says, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Amen? So let's continue the story. So we continue here. Lot took a long look at the fertile plains of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Zoar. The whole area was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord or the beautiful land of Egypt. So this is a nice place. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot, he said, Lot Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley. Let's pause. Now, he didn't look at the valley and say, man, this place is so beautiful. And Abraham, because of all the great things that you've done for me, let's split this beautiful land because I'm so giving. 
And so this looks like to me a lot of selfishness. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so we see that in Lot's heart, he allowed his selfishness and his desire to capture what he thought should be his blessing instead of standing back and saying, I'm so grateful that I get to be with you, Abram, and God's blessed me so much that I will take whatever you have for me because I trust you. I think there's times when we get in trouble where we try to grab what we think we should have. Anyone here ever grabbed for something that you thought was exactly what you needed and then you got it and you're like, ooh, I messed up? Maybe it's in a relationship. You, maybe you're a lady in here and you're like, oh, that guy. Mm. God's gift to me. Blessings on me, right? <laughs> then you get him and that scrub. No, I'm joking. That guy is, he's not what you were looking for. But you were so pressed on saying, that's, that's what I have, that you didn't stand back and have an attitude like Abraham with the Holy Spirit's insight to say, you know what? God's going to bless me. I trust you. Whatever you have for me, I will take. A lot of selfishness. But then the passage goes on, and this is where we really see how amazing and how great God is. So Abraham settled in the land of Canaan, and Lot moved his tents to the place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and consistently sinned against the Lord. So the very land that Lot desired to grab is a, uh, a melting pot of sin and issue. And so like I said, sometimes we grab for things we think we should have and then reality sets in. So the passage goes on to say, After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. I am giving all this land that you can see. Isn't that good? That's a good word to remember that when you are willing to bless and put others before yourself, God will continue and still bless you. Amen. So it goes on, to you and your descendants as a permanent possession, and I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. In the beginning I said our title is Don't Miss Out, and I said don't miss out on what the Holy Spirit can speak to you. But the second thing, and you'll see it in your notes, don't miss out on an opportunity to um, that honor is not a decision we consider. Don't miss out on the opportunity of realizing that honor is not a decision we consider. It's a truth we embrace. When we look at this thought of honor and we see Abraham honoring Lot even when he didn't deserve it, it wasn't a decision that he considered, but it was a truth that he embraced. And so the worship team can come up. And I am going to give you just two simple points that I want to encourage you to take part in as you go through the rest of this week. And so what is God's Holy Spirit trying to reveal to us today? As I was sitting in my office and I woke up, right, once I woke up, <laughs> and I was praying and saying, God, what is it that you're trying to say? He wants us to look and see there's something specific that the Holy Spirit wants to say to us that will take us to new heights in our faith with God. Point number one is this. When we choose to embrace, sorry, when we embrace honor and put people before ourselves, God will bless us. I'll say it again. When we embrace honor and put people before ourselves, God will bless us. I think if we're being honest, and I'll be honest with, for me, choosing to put others before ourselves is a very, very difficult task. And so as we look at Scripture and we realize that God challenges and equips us and helps us and, and wants us to put others before ourselves, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in to be our advocate and to help us in those scenarios. We look at Lot, as I said earlier, he was full of selfishness, which pushed him from having the ability to have honor. But we see in verse 14 that when Abram chose to honor 
Lot, he was blessed. We look at verse 14. It says, After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. Putting the needs of others before ourselves, although difficult, although hard, it is what God challenges and calls us to do. So I want you to look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. (laughs) I'm going to believe that your blessing doesn't mean that I lack. Look look to your next neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. (laughs) I'm going to believe, and the worship team can come up, that your blessing blessing. is not going to be my lack. Guys, I promise you that when you choose to honor, it helps you to understand that what someone else is getting is not going to hinder what you are supposed to get because we serve a God who sees you differently than he sees the person sitting next to you. And Abraham had such a understanding of God and his faithfulness and the importance of honoring that he didn't allow what he wanted to get in the way of him blessing others. Point number two. When we can freely give honor, sorry, we can freely give honor because it is not contingent on people's behavior. It's a hard one, but I want to say it again. We can freely give honor because it's not contingent on people's behavior. Now, some of you guys sitting here like, Ray, you don't understand what you're saying right now. But as we look at this story, would we agree that Lot did not deserve to be honored by Abram? Yes, right? And so if we see that, but yet he communicated and demonstrated honor to someone who didn't deserve it. And for me, as I prayed and said, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say? He's saying that, look, you are called to honor even when people's behavior is not contingent on you doing it. So maybe you've got a family member and you have just been giving over and over and over and then we stop and then over and over and over and yet God is saying I'm still calling you to honor them and bless them even when they don't deserve it. So as we venture into chapter 14 of Genesis and you see that the land that Lot chose ended up to be the breeding ground of this army where they're fighting over land and you see these five kings come together and they're fighting and what happens is the very land that Lot chose to grab was the breeding ground for this huge war and then what happens is Lot and all of his family and all of his wealth gets taken away and he's a captive. And so as you're looking at this passage, we find ourselves where Abraham is told the news. And so in verse 14 of chapter 14, it says, When Abram heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he laughed. He said, oh, that's good for you. You ungrateful, selfish brat. Right? That's not what it says, but how many times have we in life have seen someone that we said, look, I told you not to do that. Anyone ever said that? I told you. And you still did it, and so you sit back and say, "Mm, that's good for you. You should have listened to me. And so we see Abraham, and there was no pause. He heard this, and it says, then he mobilized 318 trained men who had been born into his household. Then he pursued Then he pursued. So I told you earlier that there were five kings that got together. So I would think if I'm looking into this passage that they may have had a little bit more than 318 men, right? 
So not only did he mobilize and pursue an army, but he was probably up against huge odds, but he chose to do it. Because what he realized was Lot was family. And him honoring Lot and saving Lot wasn't contingent on Lot's selfishness or his behavior. And so as we're getting ready to close, I love when Jesus speaks in the Bible and it also hurts a little bit. You know, he speaks and he says words and he's challenging each and every one of us to live better lives. And it's so hard. Anyone agree? It's so hard. It's so difficult. And so we find this passage in Luke 6, 27, 28. And Jesus is with his disciples and they're talking and they're talking about people who have done bad things, good things against them, right? And this is what Jesus says. He says, but to you who are willing to listen, I love Jesus. He doesn't ever force anyone to do anything, but he's offering truth and you have to decide if you want to take it or not. And so he said, for those who are willing to listen to what I have to say, what's that say? Say it again. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. In the end, he's saying, honor no matter how people treat you. Maybe you're in here today. You got a spouse who just not been good to you. Or you've been bickering and fighting. God wants you to honor them even when they don't deserve it. I want to bring up something small. And we don't usually talk about political things. And so I won't. Because in the room this size, we all have differing political views. Differing. No view, I'm going to say, is better than any other in a fight or a discussion. What I would say is, what does the Scripture have to say about our government? What does the Scripture have to say about leadership? And I believe if Jesus were standing here, he would say, I'm calling you to honor those even when their behavior doesn't deserve it. And that's a difficult conversation, but I believe that's what God is saying, that we have not allowed ourselves to be people who honor even when people don't deserve it. But as I look at this passage of Scripture, we see Abram demonstrating an honor that people didn't deserve. You'll hear all throughout the Scriptures, the New Testament, where Jesus is calling us to love and to honor and to pray for those who don't deserve it. Maybe you have a co-worker and they've been getting on your last nerves come on and it's so hard to love them so hard to pray for them so hard to bless them and believe the blessing to hope for the best because all they've been showing you is evil and bad and ungratefulness and inside you want to talk about them but God is saying I want you to pray for them Maybe there's government people and you're like, man, I just want to talk about them. Maybe God is saying, less talk, more prayer. Can we say less talk? Say it one more time. Less talk and more prayer. And there's nothing that then from there steals what your political view is. All it starts with is saying, God, I don't get these people, but I'm going to pray for them. God, I'm going to choose not to dishonor I'm going to pray because only you can change them. Do you realize that you can talk into your blue in the face, but you're not going to change them? Right? But when you pray, prayer changes things. Right? Prayer changes things. And so we've heard some of our staff. we got Luke up here. Lucas, Lucas said this. Pastor Dan has said this. Pastor Doug has said this. Practical application for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the rest of your week, the rest of your life. I want to encourage you today to honor up. Honor those who are above you, even in situations where their behavior doesn't deserve it. Because I believe when you choose honor, you get blessed. When you choose honor, you're living out exactly what God's calling you to. I want to call you to honor those under you. 
Maybe those people that work in your mail room or those who are just filling out applications for you, whatever your job is, and they're under you, I promise you that when you choose to honor those who are lower than you, God will bless that because Jesus said the first will be last, the last will be first. Uh, great leaders are servers, so honor them. And lastly, honor those all around you. Honor, honor the person next to you, beside you. Honor the barista who got your coffee wrong. Mm, that's wrong, though. That's wrong. Heresy. <laughs> but we're going to choose, Lord, to honor. I promise you that when you make that decision, your life will be so much better. So much better. So with that in mind, I'm going to pray. Why don't you bow your heads? God, I thank you that you've given us your Holy Spirit who if we choose to remove our preconceived notions that you sent him to be our advocate and to give us what we need when we don't have it. And so today I pray that you, Holy Spirit, would help us to honor and to bless and to pray for those who we perceive don't deserve it. Father, as we move through the rest of the service, continue to speak to us. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.